Good morning. This is Kathy for getting chatty with Kathy and I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to welcome Patricia Meyer to the studio today. This is your first time here at Access Communication. It is my first time here with you at Access Communication. Right. So I've been here with Lisa a couple times. Hi Lisa. <laughs> yes, yes. So on the radio waves, here we are. Yay. Thank you so much for coming. I love our conversations and I'm really excited to just kind of, you know, to chat about what's been going on with you over the summer and also where you're kind of seeing yourself going, you know, towards the fall and into the winter. I know you always have lots of neat <laughs> things going on and I'm always interested in the world that you, you know, circle in. So <laughs> please, please tell us what's up with you. Well, I love surfing the radio waves with you, Kathy. It's always so much fun. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you never know where we're going to land. Well, the newest thing that I started this summer, I don't know. I think we talked about it a little bit, maybe. Um, I am hosting a workshop. Okay. And it's called Free Your Voice. Free Your Voice. Free. And I've seen some ads, actually, for this. And I love it. You can feel it. Oh, thanks. So the next one is October the 4th at Tribal Vibes Healing Center on Broad Street in the Brownstone on Broad Street. And um, you can register for it at my website, sparksofhealing.ca under events. And so in Free Your Voice, what we're doing is so many people over their, the t course of their lives have been told, you know, be quiet, don't say that, you know, or maybe you're not, you're not as old as I am, so maybe you didn't hear this one. Children are to be seen, but not heard. No, but I know my parents would definitely say that for sure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this, the, the focus of this workshop is um, it's to clear your chakras. So to clear your seven chakras with energy and sound. Wow. So you're kind of pushing out energy perhaps that was shoved in when yeah. you were like in your youth or whenever really. Exactly. And a lot of times when you go, if you go for a Reiki healing or various um, different modalities, the healer is facilitating, but they're kind of doing all the leading and you're allowing the changes to happen. But in this, you're using your voice while focusing on the various areas of your body to make sounds and to to vibrate um, whatever's stuck in there loose. It almost seems primal. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there's one thing that we do to help release um, anger or grief or any of those kind of low, yeah. you know, heavy emotions. And we do this Hawaiian ritual uh, where we're we're smacking a pillow and making a sound, and it's it is very. Um, people are moved to tears sometimes, and not to scare people from coming, but... It's just know, very powerful. Yeah, emotions that are stuck there come up, and it's quite interesting what people remember or see or feel. Healing. Yeah, very much so. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, like people don't... Um, memories come up that you didn't consciously remember, but stuck in your con subconscious, and then sometimes that stuck feeling stops you from pursuing your dreams or asking for what you want or even worse saying yes to things that you really should be saying no to creating more of a boundary amongst yourself in a wiser way i guess absolutely and did you know that no is a complete sentence kathy <laughs> I love the word. <laughs> I feel like in our coffees and breakfasts, I've I've told you about the power of no many times. Yes. And I think that's something, a generational thing too. It's yes. like, it's hard for you to say no. Whereas for me, I have an easier time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think you're right. And you and I've talked about that because there is a bit of a gap. Not too much. We don't want to like <laughs> say like, but still there's just I'm like 58. I'll say it. I, I was care. born in 81. So I'm 43. So we got 15 years. That's about a, not a whole generation, but you know, it gives us different perspectives for sure. Yeah. You're a, you're an elder millennial. Yeah. I'm like that in that weird range yeah. where they didn't even create like something where like, where the, um, generation Z and millennial in the middle, mm -hmm. 81 to 84. We're kind of like this like mm -hmm. subculture mm -hmm. because we grew up without 
computers mm -hmm. and phones and mm -hmm. I'm like the very last generation my dad I remember got a modem and we had to get our own phone line for it because mm -hmm. like we would pick up the phone and ruin mm -hmm. whatever he was downloading and like we had a scanner that mm -hmm. we used our hand I mean like we were very blessed to ride our bikes all summer long mm -hmm. and not have to like look at a phone mm -hmm. exactly and and I'm I'm early gen x so, early Gen X, a hundred percent, and an embracer and an early adopter. Mm -hmm. I have seen these things with you that mm -hmm. I find keeps you young. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and so sometimes those um, those voices that we hear from our parents, you know, children are to be seen and not heard, and all that kind of crap. Right, or don't <laughs> cry, and I'm guilty of that. Oh, yeah. I'm bad. Like, stop whining. It's okay. Don't right. be so emotional. Right. Like. Right. Definitely, that's even come out of my mouth and I think, oh goodness. <laughs> right, so one of the other things that we do in this class is we find our inner voice because there's um, two different kind of voices, makes us sound a little cray cray, but you know. Tell us, <laughs> well, I'm interested. There's, the vo there's that voice that you hear that's always telling you not to do the things you wanna do, right? So whose voice is that? So in November, um, so the, these classes, this is the third Free Your Voice workshop that I'm holding the one on October 4th, and that one is two and a half hours long. And so the, the biggest um, response that I got from people, the biggest feedback was, hey, like you, the only thing I wish is that this was longer. So in November, I'm going to do a six hour immersive wow and in that one we're going to find those voices inside us that voice that's always telling you no that's shaming you like who do you think you are to self, have a radio self sabotaging show? you yeah yeah so we're going to find out who that voice is have a little chat with it then we're going to make room for that still small voice inside of us the one that gives us all the great ideas like Hey, Kathy, you should start a radio show. It would be fun. That voice. And embrace that voice and bring it out and then learn to say yes to it. So leaning mm -hmm. into yes is a practice you actually have to work on. Mm -hmm. And there is, it's, I wouldn't call it singing. It's more like chanting that we do or toning. Um, and you don't have to be a good singer. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go, Oh, you know, you really need to work on your ear. You know, it's, it's not, um, and sometimes it's ugly, but the ugly shakes up what's stuck in there and lets it out. So yeah. Sounds like a really cool event. It is a really cool event. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I took this class. I took a class originally in 2014 called, um, soul voice. And now I'm not a certified soul voice practitioner, um, but what I'm doing is sharing what I've learned, how I've learned it, how I use it, and how it's benefited me in my life to really open up. Um, one of the most fun responses that I got, uh, two of the ladies who attended together to the first workshop, they found themselves at a Joni Messina concert. It's normally quite reserved. She's soft-spoken, you know, really a gentle person, beautiful, I love her. Um, and she was at this concert and she found herself with her arms in the air, just swaying and singing at the top of her voice. And then that little voice said, what are you doing? Somebody might hear you. And she's like, shut up, we're having fun. And just kept letting her rip. So that's what I want. I want people to embrace their lives passionately. Yeah. Makes it more fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you know, there's that uh, saying, what is it you, you miss all the shots you didn't take, right? 100%, everyone. Yeah. You're not yeah. gonna get any of them if you don't try. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. When we, were, we went for a walk this summer, and when we were on our walk, one of the things that we were talking about was following your intuition, right? And where, um, I call it shooting on yourself, like you should on yourself, right? I should do this, I should do that, you know, oh, I took these classes, so I should do this with it. And then sometimes we pursue that should, and it's so darn hard. Like there's hurdles every time we turn around. But then there's that still small voice that says, it's time for you to have a workshop 
and teach people how to sing and free their voices. And then people come to you and say, will you hold your workshop here? Will you so hold your... easy. Right. And when it's easy, like push the easy Lean button. Lean into the yeah. easy because it's organic. Exactly. Yes. And it's interesting that like some people may say it's your intuition. Some people might say it's timing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that at play with those sort of things. And I think sometimes we just got to listen to it. It was funny yesterday. Funny thing happened. I was running around the house looking for I always lose stuff I'm terrible for it. <laughs> and I have to have a pass to go to the airport so I'm searching 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 and I give up I'm just I'm done but then I did something random and all of a sudden there's the pass mm -hmm. it's just I should have just relaxed it would have come but I had to spend two hours running around like a lunatic and yeah. it was right there yeah. in front of me I totally agree with you. <laughs> there was one, when when Jared and I were getting married, we had to bring proof of our previous our former, <laughs> former divorces. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we had to bring our divorce certificates <laughs> from our previous marriages. Searching everywhere, and I couldn't find it. And then I remembered with Reiki, you can use Saheki, which is one of the symbols that you learn to find lost things. <laughs> I need to do that. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. need to do a workshop. Yeah. So, so I, that's funny. So I, I thought, oh gee, why don't I do what I teach, you know, what I tell everybody else to do. And I did it. And then I heard this really sassy voice. My inner voice is really is sassy like me, but with no filter. If you can imagine. <laughs> Just wait till you get old. I know, right? It's going to be fun uh, for me anyways. But yeah, so this voice goes, you left it in the orange folder on your desk because you were too lazy to put it back in the filing cabinet. It's right out in the open. So I walk up to my office, sure as shooting. You there knew. It is. Yep, there it is right on the desk. Yeah, she's super sassy, Mike. I like that. Yeah, I know, right? I'm sure yours is too. Um, I don't even want to, to think about the idea of people knowing what I'm thinking. In my head. <laughs> it's like my filter. I at, like it's big, so I don't know. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be entertaining. There you go. So I was like thinking about that walk, and one of the things that I learned, and I, okay, this is a little embarrassing actually. So I'm 43. We've said this 81. And I've lived in um, the East End pretty much my whole life. Right. Right? Like the whole time except one year in Korea and when I was a baby in the North End. So like I'm an, I'm an, I didn't know there was a labyrinth in the East End. And for those of you that don't know what a labyrinth is, like I, I think of um, maybe like the movie with David Bowie and the high walls and all that sort of thing. And no, that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, that's a labyrinth, but I'm talking about a different type of labyrinth. This mm -hmm. one's with like intention and like getting off the old and in with the new. And we have one that you can walk. Yeah. You knew this because you took me there. Yeah. And I, how did I not know this? <laughs> So uh, a year ago, I not even, like this spring, I went, there's a labyrinth out of Regina. I'm tr going blank on. A Craven? Close to, yeah. I forget her name. Oh, Erin Campbell Howell. Yes. 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 Have you been? Uh, yes. Out at Disney. We call it Disneyland. Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney. Mm -hmm. Well, she is quite a uh, homes kind of stead there for mm -hmm. those of you that haven't been. I think she does retreats there. Mm -hmm. um, she had the RWN there. Yeah. Um, her husband has high low Angus or they have high low Angus and it's on their property. And yeah, it's op like it's stunning. open to the public. You have to make an arrangement with you. You can't just show up at her place. Oh, I didn't but notice. Yeah, hers is amazing. Well, and so that was my first time kind of getting it. So she sits us in this, her home has like basically like a space made to inside to like mm -hmm. kind of like debrief or like introduce the concept of what this mm -hmm. is. So we sit down and she gives us a piece of paper explaining the design of it and then um, she explains so when you're walking through the labyrinth we're supposed to be thinking about the things that we're letting go right so when you enter the labyrinth you you release as you enter and then you in the center you reflect 
and then as you're walking out of the labyrinth, and it's the same path in as out, then you receive. Unless you get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but you know, that one doesn't have high walls, the one the one at the church. What is the church? Um, Heritage United Church. So it's on... Um, Arcola and Ar Arnson. Yeah, Ar Ar Aronson, Aronson Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just off Arcola Avenue, um, just like towards Prince of Wales Drive and all of that, really east. But yeah, that one's a really small one. The one at Aaron's is quite large and she and her daughter plotted it out. It's and beautiful. it's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. And she's also a flower buff. You can just mm -hmm. see it surrounding it. So, oh, yeah. and then she has some, like the friendliest cats ever that were <laughs> very interested in all of us. It was mm -hmm. quite a place and she's a chef. Or is it her husband? They cooked a whole meal for us too. Yeah. Spectacular. Yeah. But the labyrinth, I had never heard of it before. Like I really mm -hmm. didn't know until recently and it was really cool mm -hmm. to self reflect. I, don't, reflect. I don't think that we spend a lot of time making a time for that. So when we were there, we just walked and it was there. Yeah. So we, it was meant to be, so we yeah. had to do it. And it was really nice to just take a moment to reflect. But then what I also liked was it got us into this like frame of mind that was a lot more chill. Mm -hmm. And then we walked through the fields in the, like what a stunning walk we And scared all the partridges. Yes, we did. They were quite <laughs> cute scurrying away. It's like, where else can you have a walk like that? And it's just like, in the middle of a city. I just, we're very blessed. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can search, um, I don't know the website, but if you search Labyrinth, Saskatchewan, there is actually um, a map and there's locations. Um, Cause I, I know there's one out, um, Our Lady of Lords. There's one out there and I keep meaning to go, but I have, maybe that should be our next adventure, Kathy. I like that. Yeah. I love adventures. Yeah, it's it's further like east of Regina, like towards when you're heading towards Weyburn. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. a day trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's lots of little hidden gems all around Saskatchewan and I find like this is the perfect time of year to do that sort of thing with the colors changing. Mm -hmm. It's really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there is a labyrinth right in um, uh, near Lumsden, um, but I don't know who owns that property mm -hmm. anymore. It used to be, there was a retreat center and it's Was it up on the hill? Yeah. I think it's now been purchased to be like a rehab, rehab center or something oh, okay. like that. Which would be wonderful there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right, there is something, and there's something about walking that spiral to the center. Um, it is it is that really going in as you're walking and then, you know, staying. We didn't stay for long in the center, but staying in the center to just reflect on the things that arose while you're walking. Um, and then, you know, receiving as you're spiraling out from the center and opening up. Listening to that intuition. Exactly. Because, you know, we don't take the time to just, we're so busy in life, especially if you have young kids or... Full-time job, yeah. a house, yeah. just living. I find life is just really fast-paced all the time now. Mm -hmm. And to make that connection, you know, to our higher power, to our higher self, our soul self, you know, um, the more that we do that, the easier things get. And then the louder that intuition, that intuitive voice gets, and then we get to do more fun things. Whatever it's telling you to do. Exactly. Sometimes those things are a little scary, but they're fun in the long run, right? Honestly, every time I've done anything that's felt hard or awkward or bad has led me to a better thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like those are the things that you need to listen to and do almost. It's like, mm -hmm. like listen it, it'll help i remember when i was in university and like i'm a business graduate i did marketing and i but my job at the time in, in university was sitting and entering in dental claims Ooh, that doesn't sound like a kathy job it was really <laughs> riveting right so at the time you could listen to music on like cd so mm -hmm. like i listened to a lot of music and tried to keep myself entertained but like I remember getting anxiety and like my stomach would bother me. My guts weren't happy. It was because I hated doing it. I was like mm -hmm. looking out a window 
doing work that I didn't want to do or care about or connected to. Mm -hmm. And I wish in those moments, that's where I would have reflected and said, well, why would I continue doing this? I did that for another like 15 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> not listening. Yeah. So I really do think if you listen to it, like, as, like be true to that as early as you possibly can, it'll save you a lot of time. Yep, and I love um, teaching children to tune into their bodies and listen. How do you do that? Well, um, so I also teach Reiki for kids. Um, for cool. Tw 12 to 17 or the kids or teens. And you teach them how to feel um, their own energy as we as we do self healing and teach them how I, I play a little game with them where I show them how big their energy is with um, coat hangers okay with metal coat hangers this is fantastic yeah and then we teach them how to use their body as um, a pendulum um, to test things and just teach them to feel that feeling and here's the thing whether you're a child or whether you're 42 or 58 doesn't matter feelings have information okay so now there's a difference between when we force a feeling you know when we go into our mind and we start feeling sorry for ourselves and we like pull all the sad memories and then we make ourselves feel sad that's a different story that you know that definitely that needs some different kind of work. But when a feeling comes on us naturally, like if we start to feel, we're walking down the street and we feel nervous all of a sudden, okay, listen to that, right? There, there's something going on. Or you feel super drawn to somebody, like I was really drawn to you when we first met, right? We had lots of talks right off the hop, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And so when we listen to that feeling, it draws us to what's good for us and what's not good for us. Have you ever met a person who everybody else raved about and then you meet them and you're like, mm. yeah, exactly that, huh? You know, well, that person's not for you. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that there's even anything. You're just, energies aren't meant yeah. to connect. Yeah, you, know, you don't match. And so when you try to force that, that's when. It's you know, awkward. Right. So when those feelings rise up naturally in our body, they have information. So the key is feel the feeling. Lean into it. Lean into it. Ask it, what do you want me to know? And then let that feeling just flow out through your feet into the Mother Earth can handle it. She can transmute it back into love and peace and all that good stuff. So when a feeling comes up, don't try to push it away because like you said, it got stuck in your gut. It got stuck in your hip, did you say? I have a bad hip yeah. actually, but my yeah. guts. Yeah. I really wish I would have listened to myself back then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and the feelings are there to tell us. Tell us, us. yes, right. yes. Yeah. Yeah. We need to lean into it and we need to listen. It's so funny today we were like, what are we gonna talk about? And here we are, <laughs> we're like in a walk, we're talking about you know, how we should follow what we're feeling. We're talking about maybe having an experience where you can listen to those feelings and get rid of those old feelings, mm -hmm. make space for new feelings, mm -hmm. and all this while listen. You know, the listening thing is what I think, I don't wanna drag like regular school systems and our cool, like I, we're working Just on all this stuff. It. <laughs> but like, I don't think that we teach anybody anything useful these days. No, you know where I took my best learning to how to listen is um, like I've been a corp like a coach in in the corporate world, right? And I coached people in the call center, and I coached um, did some peer coaching as an organizational change manager, and then I even got to coach some of the directors and executives. And yeah, you're, we don't learn how to listen and how to speak so that other people will listen to us. So it, it's really, really interesting. Um, so we don't listen to each other and we don't listen to ourselves. And that would be really good things for students to, to learn. Yeah, for kids to learn. Yeah, I, I've heard and read and everything. It's like when you're having a conversation, maybe this is all my years of counseling, um, is let somebody say something, but don't think of your response. Mm -hmm. Just like hold what they've said. And another good tip I got was when somebody's talking to you about a problem, 
Sometimes you just need to ask, do you want me to do something about it or do you just want me to listen? That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Because sometimes you just need to have the space to bitch about something. Yeah, and sometimes you just need somebody to let you speak it all the way through because you already have your solution. Maybe you need some validation, but you don't need them to jump in and save you. That you just, we call it holding space. Yeah. Right? You hold space for that other person to just be heard. Yeah, be heard. So this is something that I think kids definitely need to learn in school. Mm -hmm. Finances and all of that sort of thing too. I don't mm -hmm. think kids are learning about. I didn't learn about what a line of credit versus a credit card was until I worked at a bank. Mm -hmm. And that was like when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Like all of that time ahead of it, I should have understood what interest was, how that worked versus the different products. It's just... It's just sad to see that for generations, we've had all of these learned things in, in society and it's like we don't share them in the classroom. That could be mm -hmm. so beneficial, like listening to your gut. That's a life experience mm -hmm. thing, right? Why are we sharing that to our youth? Well, I think that um, I'm not ever gonna put any of this on teachers because teachers have classrooms that are They're far huge. too big. Yeah. And I don't, well, this is like a whole show on itself, Kathy, about how- I know, and I'm looking at the time, we got 30 seconds. <laughs> but it is changing. Like I have seen meditation being yes, taught in school. Yes, yoga. And that, yeah, and those are those are good starts. You're right. right. Those are good starts. Let's get, let's get more into intuition, maybe, guys. Mm -hmm. Anyways. We talked about so many interesting things. <laughs> I love having you on the show. I'll have you again soon, I'm sure. Don't forget about October 4th. We are gonna have a sound healing event at, where is it? Tribal Vibes Healing Center. So you might not be able to Google that. It's also known as the Stretch Studio, but it's, uh, I think it's 12, oh, I shouldn't have written down the address. I believe it's 1275 Broad Street, uh, across from Belle Village. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Belle Village. It's my favorite with uh, a little Target. Yeah, there Tar you go. Target, I there mean. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so October 4th, then you can register at sparksofhealing.ca, go to events, and then free your voice. Love this. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for your ears, and we will talk soon. Take care out there. Bye now.